Hello, hello, hello. We're going to try something a little bit different tonight. If you guys can hear us okay, if the mic sounds fine, let us know. Give us a thumbs up. Tell us you can hear us okay. We're putting the actual mic, this little guy, up today to see if that helps just a little bit. Yesterday, we got a little bit excited, and um, and by that, I mean me. Okay, sounds good. Fantastic. Yeah, I managed to, to set the audio off last of the time. But. Anywho, welcome to day number two of Confidence Coaching Week. We have decided to do one more night shared into our Facebook group and shared onto our YouTube channel instead of just in the Confidence Coaching group. If you haven't got on there, um, follow the link that's in the description on this and have gotten into that private group, gotten into our emails where we send you the replay. If you haven't done that yet, please make sure to do so. We can make sure that you're included and keep getting the updates on all of this and then getting to access those replays. We had a bunch of requests to do one more time. So tonight, maybe our last opportunity before we switch that over into the private Facebook group. Um, I haven't given anything fun today other than ride horses and work on confidence coaching stuff. What was your favorite horse of the day? My favorite horse of the day. Oh, I have a. I have a feeling that's a little waspy, um, and I got her out and about today. Um, and it really goes with, hey, who do you want to be? And what? what's the quote of the day? Pumba. What's Pumba say? What's Pumba say? Leave your past in the behind. Leave your behind in the past. Leave your past in the <laughs> No, leave your behind, like the booty. Leave your behind in the past. The big, so important for today. Because I have a horse, uh, a filly that I'm working that she was a little okay. waspy when I Sound came. Sound has a little echo. Hold on. Is the echo better or worse? Can you guys let us know that? See if it's a little bit better. A little more. Why is it muffled? It is a brand new microphone. Mic is a bit gargled at moment. Hmm. So, okay. I'm one says better, one says worse. Uh oh. One says same, one says good. Okay, better. Okay, not even. How about now? Is it better now? A can you hear me? Tiny bit, a little more. Clear. Can you hear me now? Can, can you, you hear me now? Mic check. Mic check. One two one two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it, do it, do it. Okay, you have so all good. the time, but you can't do it on. It comes and goes. It's brand new. It's, it's literally okay. just, I bought it right before Africa. I'm allowed to hate a new computer. No, you're not. Okay, better when you are more away. All right, guys, so check this out. This whole day is all about leaving the past in the behind. A good horse person is like a good quarterback. A good quarterback can throw an interception and then turn around and throw the deep ball. Uh, my favorite Philly of the day was a filly that has been lost. He one of these ones that like to flip over backwards and throw herself on the ground. And the ability to hop on her and just ask her to walk trot canter forward and kind of do it with some urgency. And then immediately as she was willing to go forward, her first real day of breaking loose, hey, open the gate. Open the gate, boom, take her out into the, the big wide world and for her to have that awesome trip. And that only works if you can leave the past behind you. If you keep if you keep getting them and holding their past against them, they'll forever be that horse. All right, we're going back to the normal that we did yesterday. All right, let's try that. Any better? Less underwater? Can you hear me now? You sounded like you were a drowning fish. Oh, yeah. That's so much better. Okay, Sounds perfect. Sounds much better. Okay. Awesome. Oh. <laughs> Dang you, Amazon. You sold me a faulty product. It's fine. All right, guys, so check this out. Everything is about with yourself and with your horse. What we're going to be talking about today is about looking into the future and leave the past behind you. The reason that your eyeballs are in the front of your head is because we're going forward. You don't have to look back at what happened before. You're not going there. You're going forward. You know that you're on track whenever you stop looking back. Okay. 
So everything about working in my career with problem horses is they can have a complete meltdown or hissy fit or this or that today. And tomorrow we expect them to do the right thing. If you treat them like a victim, they'll forever be a victim. If you treat them like the horse you want them to become, they will become that horse. So it's the same thing whenever you're trying to gain confidence in yourself. Hey, if you failed yesterday or you had an issue yesterday or you came off yesterday, today's today. Yesterday was yesterday. Let's go ahead and focus on the job at hand and what we're trying to do to move in that direction. Right? Much better. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's that's exactly the point that we wanted to make is, you know, we always talk about this with the horses and that's kind of like we said, the confidence coaching week is a little bit different than what we normally do because we normally train the horses. We teach you how to train your horses. We walk you through those steps. We hold your hand the whole time when you want it, when you need it. And we help you find success with your horse. But we don't really spend a whole lot of time like solely focusing on your confidence and getting your mindset right. And we focus so much on like Michael's quote, treat the horse like the horse you want them to be. You kind of need to treat yourself like the rider that you want to be. And have those expectations for yourself and and use the, the positive self-talk and the things that we talked about yesterday. Every one of these lessons that we're going to talk about, if you mess up the microphone by moving around, every one of these conversations and talks that we're going to have is all building on each other. So make sure that when you're thinking about you know what your goals are and you write them down and you decide what it is that you want to do with your horse, what it is that you want to do with yourself, and what confidence issues you want to get through you kind of have to get a clear picture and a blank page and not sit there and focus so much on the things that have happened to you. And one thing that we like to do and one thing that we really appreciate from our training program is we ask the horse all these questions so we're not getting surprised by them. So if something happens and in the past, you can probably think through any incident that's happened to you and think about what happened or what could have happened or you're not sure what happened or you don't know why it happened and you can get a lot of clarity from going through steps and trying to figure out, okay, well, what, what about this situation is what caused this problem? And did I properly prepare my horse for this situation? Did I expose them to a bunch of things so they can kind of learn to expect the unexpected? And you can't prepare a horse for everything. We just went and trained horses in Africa to be okay with lions. We were not going out and seeking lions to make that happen. So what we do in our training program is we do so many crazy things and we work on taking the horse and getting them out of their comfort zone and letting them know, hey, come hell or high water, no matter what happens, whatever we're doing, it may seem like the end of the world to you today, but we're going to get through this together. I'm not going to let you get hurt and I'm going to lead you through this. And you're able to get that horse to get confidence in you because they know that you're going to make the right decisions for them. They get comfort and confidence and knowing that you're going to tell them when it, you know, if they need to be scared and run away, you're going to tell them when that's the time to do so. You don't want that horse thinking all the time that worrying, constantly panicking because they don't know what's going to happen or what's going to, especially trail riding. You go past one bush and a, a bird comes out. Are we good? Everything's yeah, good. good. Okay. <laughs> I start seeing all the, the comments going and I'm having PTSD from yesterday. Anywho, so you want to really make sure that, that horse is confident in you and you start getting your confidence built up in your horse and knowing that you've trained the horse the proper way you've taken them through the steps you can build that confidence together but just like on this board behind me it says be one percent better each day now first thing you're going to notice is one percent and one percent is going to look a lot different to everybody so one percent to one person might be spending an extra three to five minutes with their horse that's one percent better than you were the day before 1% better might be something as simple as doing an exercise or um, horse related, going out and doing one more thing that you've never done with your horse, doing one more skill, spending an extra five minutes on something. The baby steps of thinking the 1% at the end of the day, doesn't matter if it's perfect progress. It doesn't matter if you feel like you're not making much progress. Some progress is going to continue, keep building and become more and more. That 1% is going to eventually become 100% better 100 days from now. And this applies to your horse training, but it also applies to your life. What are you doing every day to be 1% better? And I say every day, each day. This says each day instead of every day because we're human and your horses are horses and it's okay to not do something every single day. It's okay to have an off day. It's okay to not feel like you need to just go and go and go and go. No, 
no, no, no. What are you doing? Are you getting, are you in the comments? Are you putting comments just, on there? Just looking at the are comments. You, are you sure? Yeah. Sure looked like you were adding to the comments. Can't be a part. You're in the conversation. You can't be a part of the conversation. Gotcha. Got it. Yeah. Remember the whole squirrel cat, all the different trees. Yeah. Learn the rules. Got Learn it. Learn the rules. Got it. What did you say? Horse training. Horse training is like husband training. Yes. Why do you look scared? Repetitiveness <laughs> will get your horse to do anything. You already know that repetitiveness will get your husbands to do anything as they always have the last word. Yes, dear. Okay, honey. So all of you young ladies are already prepared to be amazing horse people. You just have to use the same approach. Repetitiveness. Repetitiveness. So I want you guys to take a second. And initially when we started this confidence coaching week, I was like, I'm going to make a workbook and I'm going to do all these things. And we don't want to create overwhelm. And we already like to talk, which we found out yesterday. Okay, we're going to have to change up things a little bit because you guys don't have two hours to listen to us just babble and babble. Um, so it's going to be a little bit less on some topics tonight and a little bit more on others. And we're going to kind of switch our schedule around a little bit just so you don't feel like you're having to catch up two hours of information. If you missed yesterday, the most important part is the very beginning. At the end of that, we invite you to join us as we do our video reviews that we do with our members every single week. And so same thing tonight. After we go through the, the primary day one content for the Confidence Coaching Week, we're going to invite you to join us for our Q&A, which is one thing that we do every week on Wednesdays. And we have a bunch of questions on that that we're going to cover and share with you guys. You're more than welcome to join us for that. We were planning to also go through and cover our first vlog from our Africa trip. But when we started going through all the questions and getting those together for tonight, um, there's a good chance our vlog's probably going to push more to the second half of our confidence coaching week. So we can kind of fill you in on all the experiences, answer the questions that you might have about our Africa trip. But for right now, we just want to focus going forward on here. And I want you to think about this question. Who do you want your horse to be? Now, we've talked about wanting to do goals, and you've set um, goals for yourself. You might have looked at your confidence issues and tried to base goals based off that. And who do you want your horse to be? Kind of where are you at? Where would you like to, who would you like your horse to be? Can't talk. And then I want you to think about that same question for yourself. Who do you want to be? Now, not only in the riding aspect, not only in horses and, and that side of the goals, who do you want to be as a person? Where do you want to be? What do you want to be doing? What is it that sets your soul on fire? And again, not directly related to horses. And this is kind of one thing that got Michael super excited about this confidence coaching week is I said, look, I want you to do that whole like motivational thing that you do every single day. He's like the best person at not necessarily shaming you, but making you realize in a very positive manner that there's other things that you could be doing with your life and there's other things that would make you more happy and there's other things you could be doing with your horse other than you know stressing about getting hurt or stressing about taking them out of the arena or stressing about taking them away from their friends and you spend so much time effort energy and money on your horse you need to have fun and if you're not having fun work with us let us help you make a plan to where you can enjoy your horse every single ride if you're not doing that, you're in the right place. And we want to help you walk through those steps, fix those things with your confidence um, in regards to the whole 1%, all that stuff. Give me something. I know that you constantly have like things floating around in your head. You go all different directions, which is why we tried to plan a little bit of a theme for each night. Because if you just let this, this go into the wild, it uh, gets a little crazy. All right, guys, so it just doesn't, at the end of the day, it just doesn't matter if you have the best vehicle, the best car, the best horse, the best boat. If you don't know where you're going, you're not going to get there. So it's of the utmost importance to know who you want to be, where you're trying to go, what you're trying to get out of your horse. You would never just go to the garage, get in your vehicle, close the door, if you're Kelsey, put on your seatbelt. Then you would start the car up and then think, huh, where am I going today? You would never do that. But people all around, since they have such a vague goal of, hey, I just want to have a horse. Hey, I just want to ride. They'll saddle up. They'll go to the barn, brush the horse off, saddle up and sit on the horse. And then there's no plan from there. And 
idle hands uh, do the devil's work. Well, also the lack of intention and the lack of a plan or a drive or anything like that, that gets you in trouble and it gets horses in trouble because how are they going to be guided by you if you don't know where you're guiding or where you're going? Something as simple as, okay, you're in an arena. I'm going to steer to this side of the arena and I'm going to look at that post and drive in a straight line to that post. And before I get there, I'm going to change my gaze and go somewhere else. And something as simple as that. That's why so many of the exercises we, we put cones or in dressage, they have the, the letters up in different places and send their students to a direct spot because now you're riding with intention. Have you ever noticed that kids are amazing riders? A lot of them don't know anything and they're doing everything wrong as far as perfection or, or horsemanship or communication or anything. But you know what? The two things that they have right. Number one, they don't think about what can go wrong. They're thinking about what can go right. And number two, from the other side of the arena, the other side of the ranch, you can look at a child ride a horse and say, oh, I know what he's trying to get, whether he's getting it or not. I know what he's trying to get because he's pulling left, left, go this way. Go, go, whoa, whoa. They're being so obvious and so ridiculously clear that a lot of times they have a lot better results than us adults. Because as adults, all we can think about is what's going to go wrong or how we're going to fall off or how we're going to get hurt. And then on top of that, we start thinking, oh, I need to think about this and think about that. And we're not thinking about the intent that we're giving to our horse. Something as simple as looking where you want to go. And whether that's physically on the horse, looking where you want to go, or before you ride your horse, knowing what you're trying to accomplish with your horse, making sure that you're consuming information that's going to help you every day along that path. Um, whenever I decided I, I wanted to become a roper, I started watching videos and reading books. A of, lot, a of, lot, a of lot roping. of videos. Every day, consuming information. All day. And, oh, today, this is what I'm going to do with my horse. Oh, today, this is what I'm going to do with my horse. Okay, today, (laughs) this is what I'm going to do with my horse. Today, this is what I'm going to do with my horse. And, you know, a year, a little over a year of practicing every opportunity that I got. It took me a year to, number one, um, I didn't rope growing up. I was in a show barn, so we had no reason to rope. Um, Two, I'm left-handed. So when I did learn to be a colt starter and I learned how to rope, it was with my left hand. And then when I finally roped off of a horse, they're like, oh, by the way, all that practice you did, you need to switch it over to your right hand now to be competitive. It took me a year of practicing all the time to get my right hand caught up. The whole time I was consuming information and then going out and trying things. I had a plan every single day of what I wanted to work on. And over the course of that year, I was able to, my goal was to win a buckle off of a Pasifino. And it took me a year to accomplish that goal, but I wouldn't have been able to do it in a year or ever if I didn't have a plan and know exactly what I wanted to do. So that's what it's all about is knowing what you want to do, knowing what your horse wants to do. What do you want to do with your horse? And then riding with intention, living with intention. You wouldn't believe how many people you said, if you could do anything you wanted to and money was no issue, no object, what would you do? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, that's not a viable answer. You need to know what you want to do. For so many of you that are listening, you already have it figured out. You have a passion. You love horses. So awesome. Great. You have your you have your passion. You have your horses. Now what are we going to do with that? Now let, let's now that we're on the boat that we want, now let's make sure the captain knows where we're trying to go. And you uh, ladies and gents are the Capitan. So let's figure out where we're headed um, because that's what's going to make us happy is I'll tell you what, you can absorb a lot of pain. You can absorb a lot of discomfort. You can absorb a lot of things that a lot of other people can't if you know where you're headed. There's something about knowing where you're going and putting one foot in front of the other that allows you to accept failures, accept pain, accept discomforts. Whenever you don't know and you're just a, you want to be a meaningful, specific, not a wandering generality. When you're just kind of wandering around, then that's those are people who really shy away from discomfort, from, oh, failure, oh, it didn't go right. Well, it's real easy to push those folks around because they have no direction. 
when somebody is on a path like a bullet, they are very hard to stop. Uh, so that's what it's all about. It's just knowing who you want your, your horse to be, knowing who you want to be, and then just day in and day out through focus and repetition, being better, 1% better, 1% better. And next thing you know, you look up and like, hot dang, it wasn't too long ago. I had no idea what I was doing. Now look at me. Look at me now. Look at me okay, now. Okay, now you wrap. Good, yeah. cool. Oh, it's like 25 minutes delayed, you know, but better, better late than never. Is that, is that pretty close? Was, I was good. Decent. Oh. Are you talking about the wrapping or staying on topic? Staying on topic. No, no, that was perfect. That okay. was perfect. So tie that in. Michael talks about, you know, knowing where you're going when you're getting into your vehicle. Now, one thing that I really like in the training program is Michael tries to relate everything and make things simple for people to understand, for you to be able to relate to. And when he's explaining things, he'll usually explain training horses like driving a vehicle, raising a kid, or training a dog. Because somebody usually can relate to one of those things. You either have driven a vehicle before, you own a dog, or you have a kid. That kind of gives or you- military. Or a military. Yeah, those four things. Those are um, my military. I forgot yeah, about the military. Oops. Those are my four common analogies. And why is that? Because all of us, everybody watching, and both of us, we have been so many places where you're going to learn, and somebody's talking completely above your head, and you're like, oh. I don't know if it just makes people feel better to feel like they can make everybody in the room feel stupid. I don't know if that it's that, or they learned it that way, or they feel like. I don't like it. They feel like if they talk to you at that level, it makes them sound smarter or I'm not sure what it is. Maybe, maybe if it's harder for you to learn and it sounds more complicated that you'll stay with them longer as a student. My goal is to get you in and out of this program as quickly as possible. So you'll be as happy as can be with your horse. We have no intention of sandbagging this whole process, this whole, whether you send me a horse for training, whether you hang out at this confidence course, whether you do any of our courses, any of our memberships, we are not trying to sandbag town. We I, want you to get, you can we, get, yeah, we out enjoy your horse. Absolutely. That's it. We want you to be happy with your pony. Now you'll find that we have a lot of followers that stay with us, but each and every one of them is because they're progressing ridiculously and the learning curve never stops, but not because they're stuck in one place and we're talking over their head and we're speaking in riddles and they're having to, to go home like a Rubik's cube and try to decipher the message we are trying to speak as clearly and compellingly straight to you. And the way that we do that is we break it down as simple as possible. We have a simple belief. If it's complicated to you, how are you going to get off of this computer and go swing a leg over your horse? It's complicated in your, your mind and you're going to turn around and simplify it for your horse. It's not going to happen. There's so many lessons that I've taken over my life that was really complicated to me. And then I got on my horse and I was frustrated because my horse couldn't figure it out. If it's not simple in my mind, how am I going to make it simple pressure and release for my horse? So you have to have a solid grasp of the concept that you're trying to obtain or do or head in that direction. That's why one task at a time. That's why our whole program, our whole respect series is one level, one thing that we're asking. We're willing to ask it a bunch of different ways, but one thing only. And when the horse says, aha, I got it. I said, great, let's do the next thing. One thing only. And we just put building blocks. Do you know how you make it to the mountain top? A big vision, small steps. Everything that we do, we just keep putting up. Oh, one more step. Oh, one more step. Oh, you got that one more step. You got that one more step. And that's how we're able to do that. And like she's saying, we like to break it down in something that speaks to you in analogies that you understand without being a horse person. The best compliment, my favorite compliment that I've ever received, and I've received it on multiple occasions, is I'll have a husband come up to me at a clinic and he'll say, well, well Michael, may I talk to you, young man? And yes, sir. This that darn woman here, she's drugged me all over the country going to see you that darn clinicians. And I must say, son, you're the first person I ever understood. Thank you, sir. I speak husband. If I can speak husband, if I can make a husband who doesn't want to be there, who doesn't care about horses, understand what I'm saying, then I feel like a success. I feel like I've made it simple enough that we're not leaving anybody behind. 
And whether I am coaching horses or coaching people, I want to get the most return on my investment. I want you to grow as much from every word that's coming out of my mouth. I want the horse to get better for every time I put my butt on their back. I want to make sure that I'm being heard in a way that resonates. You know, the effect that we have on others is the most valuable currency in existence. So the more we can help people and the more we can help horses, um, the better off everybody is and the more happy everybody is. So it's all about clarity. So we really like to make it very, very simple because the, our keys to success to getting the horses to do so much and so efficiently is that we make it so simple for them. We've tried anything and everything and every opportunity, every discipline that has ever been passed in front of us. We've tried it. Every training program that we've seen or read a video on, watched a video on, read a book about bought a membership, thousands, went through the videos. thousands of books and videos. Tried it, gave it a go, tried it out. Oh, that works. So let's try it. And every time, whatever is the clearest and the simplest is also going to be the most efficient and work on the most horses. Boom. That's what we're doing. It's not that we forget about everything else. It's just that if it's any more complicated or it works on less horses, we're going to put it in our toolbox and it'll probably get rusty and, and get dust on it because we're not using it too often. And whatever is the clearest, the most evolved, the easiest for a horse to understand, that's the process that we're using. And to this day, in this coaching week, I have a couple students in. If those students show me anything tomorrow that's better than what I'm doing currently at this moment as I speak to you, from that day forward, I'll be doing whatever they show me. And I will turn around tomorrow on, on our on our confidence coaching, we can tell you, hey, I made a change. And some people will be upset by that. I just figured out how to do it your way. That's great. That doesn't and, mean it doesn't work. <laughs> doesn't mean it doesn't work. It just means always trying to get 1% better and always trying to evolve. Uh-oh. Mine won't do anything makes me sad. We all got bumped off. I don't know if that means that we are you guys still on here? Maybe. I'm thought, there's a thunderstorm right here right now. So we're just making sure that you guys are in the comments. If somebody can throw us a, a thumbs, thumbs up. Thumbs up if you can hear us. If you see us, are we here? Knock, knock. Okay, cool. They're good. Okay. Just kidding. Very cool. <laughs> we have PTSD. We're Sorry. Oh, my gosh. Well, thunder, lightning just struck, and then Robert said I got bumped off. Only six got bumped off. What does that mean? I got nothing. Well, guys, so that's, that's really – the so success when, of our program. We don't take ourselves too seriously and we want to speak as clearly and ground fundamental level. I hate the fact that the horse trainers, horse trainers like myself, we didn't, we didn't go to college. We shovel poop for a living in terms. All horse talk is big words. Oh, you, you did go to college. Sorry, honey. Vertical flexion and pivoting on the haunches moving on the diagonal, all these things. Why do you make it so complicated? Put your head down, move over, move your butt, move your shoulders. It should be simpler. So we're here to make it simple for you. And if you ever, ever, ever. Who's taking the mic over to not ever have an issue with any of those questions? What's this? What's that? What's a lead? You need to. You, you got it, remember? What's the lead? Thank you. Okay. Thank what's you. a lead? What's a diagonal? What's a, just ask us. We'd be happy to tell you and tell you with happiness. Not, and that's what we're gonna do. After not this, be, we got Q and A not, not belittle you, but tell you. Uh, no question is a stupid question. Right. And if you're ever in a room where somebody makes you feel like asking a question is a stupid question, then you're in the wrong room. Walk out, shut the door, don't look back, and go find a different group of people to talk to. One of the things that oh nice, look at me smooth. oh did I just hurt your finger? Right. Poor thing, can't hurt you. No, okay. Today my muscles are just. Just a little bit bigger. I have an arm wrestling competition. No, not feeling it. I already fixed one chestnut mare for you today. <laughs> you don't want to add more than one? So one thing that we run into also whenever you're talking about training horses, picking a goal, people get scared at results that can happen quickly. So when you're talking about quickness, quickness means clarity. So that doesn't mean that one teacher versus another is doing something incorrectly or they're rushing the process or they're skipping steps. One person is just simply easier at and more simplified in how they're communicating those steps. So say, for instance, you have one trainer that takes 
30 days to get something done, one trainer that takes three months to get something done, and the person who takes three years to get something done. It's not to say that the end result is going to be any different, but the steps in getting from point A to point B and the time that it takes is how clear can you make that to the horse that you're teaching? Same thing with the person. If you go somewhere and you're, you see this all the time in college classes and high school and any kind of educational program, you'll see some students that really excel in the environment they're in. And then you'll see other students that quit that class in college and go get a different professor, wait for the new semester, get a new professor, get in there, realize, oh crap, this one's bad too, go find another one. So you have to make sure that you're putting yourself around people in a program that can make you have something to hold yourself accountable and just start checking things off the list. Okay, I've done this, I've done that, but not feel like you have to go through six months or a year of a program to start seeing success. And everything that you do, if you're not finding progress doing one step, doing one exercise, stop what you're doing, call us, email us, and let us know what's going on because you need to be finding success. You need to be finding progress because that's kind of how things are set up is going through the steps, making things simplified, making things easier. And one thing that's frustrating is a lot of people might think they have a confidence problem, but in reality, they don't realize that they're right there. They're just one step away from fixing whatever that issue is. Um, give the analogy. You do this so much better than I do. Talk about there's people you wouldn't get into your garage, get into your car, hop in, turn on the ignition and the steering wheel lock up. Do that one. You can do it so much better than me. Well, you're doing such a great no, job. No, I'll mess it up and you'll be looking at me through the side of my eye. Go do it. All do right, it. guys. So it's as simple as this. You know, when you turn the, the steering wheel on. <laughs> Okay, my yeah. turn. Do you know when you turn your vehicle you on your and the steering wheel immediately breaks loose? You just know that feeling. And what you know is if it doesn't happen, it freaks you out and you would never drive off. You wouldn't believe if I told you how many times, four or 500 horses a year for the better part of a decade going around the world, how many people around the world are riding a horse with no steering wheel? The steering wheel does not turn. It's locked up. And they're like, it's okay. Cookie will take care of me. Why do you always use cookie? That's a personal attack. Buttercup will take care Thank of me. Thank you, Buttercup. Putin will take care. Look here. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a steering wheel and you are alive, it's because your horse wants you to be alive. But you are riding on borrowed time. And yesterday we touched on the topic that everybody is learning in riding lessons in college courses. They'll go for their very first day of riding lesson, and we'll be talking about their posture and sitting upright and where their hands go and how to move the horse with the legs. Uh, that's wonderful. All oh, that's beautiful. I was raised in a show ring. Great. But that's not where day one should be. Day one should be the understanding of if that horse doesn't back up out of your space on the ground, don't ride it. It doesn't respect you. If that horse doesn't have a steering wheel, if it can't just walk a circle around you on the ground, don't ride it. If you spook it or sneeze and it drags you all over the place or runs you over, don't ride it. Now, you, you see if how... If you can't drink your water bottle on the back of your horse for fear of repercussion, there's a red flag. If you can't get your horse to look left when you want it to look left and right when you want it to look right without it pulling against you, there's a problem. If you went to the end of your road and turned your right blinker on, and turn that steering wheel to the right, and that vehicle did anything other than go right. You would get out as soon as it came to a stop. Hopefully, you're not dead. You would get out and call triple A. Hey, something's wrong with this thing. It's possessed. Come fix I'm it. Making its own opinion. It it's happens every day on horses, and we think it's normal. It's normalized for the lack of education that's out there. That oh, I've been to clinics where everybody in that barn was hurt injured had a cast had a story i broke my leg i broke my collarbone I broke my shoulder and since birds of a feather flock together they just thought that that was normal oh this is just part of being a horse person you know what they say no it's not no, no it's not. i don't know what they say this is not normal okay your horse is simply a means of transportation and at one point in time it was the safest most secure way to travel okay it can still be safe and secure but we have to to figure out what the basics are to understand that we can ride. Do you know in human society, the horse is the only form of transportation that human beings believe that they don't need education to drive? 
a pilot in the air, all of them have a pilot's license. In America, everybody that drives a car has a driver's license. So no matter how little it is, they went to drive school. Okay. Motorcycle, motorcycle, motorcycle license. license, a train. You have to go to conductor school to be a train conductor. It's on a track. Where's it going to go? It's in a straight line. It's attached to the track. It can't get lost. Okay. And you have to go to conductor school for that. But at clinics, I go all the time and people bring me a horse and they say, Oh, this is my rescue horse. I say, awesome. He's, he's pretty. Um, how, how's it going? Well, it's not going too good. He, he threw me down on my head and cracked my collarbone. Uh, I was like, Oh, what's your trainer think about that? Uh, I don't have a trainer. Okay. You know, uh, how long have you been doing this? How long have you been riding? Well, I've never ridden before. Oh, okay. What do your horse friends think about it? I, I don't have any horse friends. I just want to get a horse. What books have you read? What videos have you watched? Guys, getting a puppy from the pound and getting a horse from the rest, it's not the same thing. The horse weighs a thousand pounds and it's okay if you have the experience and the backup. Think about it like this. It takes 10,000 hours to master your craft. Great. So if you have zero hours, then you want your horse to have 10,000 hours to make up for your zero hours. And you're probably going to be safe and okay, especially if you have a little bit of guiding and, and tutelage around you. As you gain 100 hours, well, now you can have 9,900 uh, hours on your horse to make up for it. As you get 10,000 hours under your belt, you should be able to ride a horse that has zero hours under their belt. And that's kind of how it works. But you wouldn't believe how... The movie Spirit and Black Beauty has gotten people hurt. Just go out there and put your forehead on their forehead and ride off into the sunset. It's not how it works. There's a little bit of a, a program that goes with it, just a little bit, but there's a little bit of just, hey, kindergarten and first grade and second grade, and I wish that it's going to be common knowledge, and we are doing everything. It's, it's kind of like our, our life. Everything. Our we life. just need to get this yes. message yes. out there that there is an easier way. You do not have to buy a program that makes you do a year's worth of thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of videos to see one second of success, one movement in the right direction. If you do not see momentum going forward, you will not continue to go forward. And the one percent if you don't see progress in any way shape or form you are not going to have the motivation or the desire to go out there and do more and one of the favorite my favorite conversations that michael has given that was really like a big picture for me is we i'm looking as these comments go through and things that people are struggling with i'm not saying that's awesome thank you for throwing that on here throwing in the comments everybody has problems like this because it's not common knowledge to have a system to go through and and make sure that you're okay to have a, a safety checklist to know that you're okay before you swing your leg over that horse. Do you know that you're in a position to be able to be ready, You've taught that horse for anything that you're going to go encounter in that ride, in that session? Because as soon as you throw your leg over that horse, you're married to them, quote unquote, <laughs> through thick and thin for better or worse, and hopefully for better, but most of the time it ends up being for worse there's this spectrum. And so if the horse's difficulty level is above your confidence level and your ability level, you're not going to fix that problem. So what we need to do is either bring up your education level to the difficulty level of that horse. You can bring it down a little bit, or you can get that horse's difficulty level brought down to your confidence level and your ability level. So there's below it, below, below it, there. sorry, below. Just yeah. a little bit, just a little bit. Why? So, Why is that? Because what, then what happens when you're uncomfortable? What happens when you're when, when you're uncomfortable? You can't fix the issue. So why? Go, you go. No, Say, you have to. No, it's guys, fine, guys. It's, fine. it's as simple as this. The whole language of the horse is pressure and release, and we use this magical word that's so vague that nobody can figure it out. It's called timing, and timing is not this esoteric only the few among us have you know you got to get bit by a nuclear horse that fell into a vat <laughs> of nuclear waste and now you're a horse man and you can <laughs> you can communicate with the horse it's not how it works this is not how it works timing that people talk about oh i wish i had my trainer's timing or this guy's timing that lady's timing timing is simply making the horse uncomfortable mental pressure whether it's clicking or kissing or tapping or or pushing until they do the thing that you want. And the moment that that 
first counter strike comes we get quiet the moment they take a step backwards to pick a foot up we release the moment they turn their head in, in the direction that we won't re-release that's all timing is and when you think about it like that wait a second no matter how complex it is no matter if it's liberty or dressage or raining or whatever it is it's a lot of little pressure releases layered together and that's it it cannot be anything more than that that's all it is i promise you all these disciplines that we do all these disciplines that we put on a night show and we put on a night show and never give up tour which i think yeah and yeah oh yeah there we go got a sign and on the night tour out of 15 out of 15 acts doing 12 of them ourselves in-house between the trick riding the roman riding uh the horse soccer liberty just right back to back to back so many things i'm talking about like coming out of the arena changing clothes in front of whoever's in the barn and hopping on the next horse and going all of those acts was taught the same way with simple pressure and releases and those horses were just able to go in we had horses that were in four different acts. I was going to say, yeah. of those acts, those yeah. horses were all multi-purpose. They, they had to fill four, all of that. In one night, in one in a 90-minute night show, go from being a soccer horse to a liberty horse to a lay-down trick a horse to a horse. Roman riding horse, all in one night. So if they can do it, you can do it. Because we're telling you, it's just little pressure releases. Back to the reason that it's so important that the horse's difficulty level is below your confidence level. Because... If you don't feel, if you feel confident with the horse, then your brain can be a hundred percent wrapped around pressure and release and your timing. If you are uncomfortable, your brain's primary job is to keep you alive, to protect you. So whenever your spider senses start tingling, whenever you say, "Uh oh, this horse is gonna kill me. Uh oh, this horse is gonna murder me. Uh oh, I'm gonna die. Uh oh, watch out," your time is gonna go out the window. And when I say it, I'm not talking to the amateur, I'm not talking to the person who's just starting. I'm talking about world-class horse trainers. I've known horse trainers that were way better than me, Olympic champions, Grand Prix champions, world champions. But they got a horse that made them uncomfortable because their day job is getting lead changes or their day job is to jump a fence or their day job is to do that on horses that do their job. And they get this horse that, for whatever reason, wants to bite them, flip over on them, kick them, do this, do that. It's above the difficulty levels, above their comfort level. Now, all their world-class timing goes out the window because they're saying, <gasps> and they're doing all that. And what, what did you think the first time that somebody wanted to send you a six-figure Grand Prix horse in the middle of jumping season? What did I think? Yeah. Well, let's do it. It must be gnarly. No, no, no. <laughs> You're like, what? I have no business. In my training oh, barn, for sure. having a six-figure horse here, but it's same thing. It's that horse had one. It was fantastic at its job, fantastic at its job, and then all of a sudden, this rearing issue developed, and this rearing issue became, you know, such a thing. Like as soon as they went in the arena and the little bell dinged, it was like, holy cow, high hole silver. This horse needs to be on spirit. Um, and like you said, it was just the the one thing that the rest of everything else with the horse is going fantastic. There's the one little thing to fix. And for a lot of you that are out there, I'm sure that you can think right off the top of your head, there might be a bunch of little things, but you can think of one thing that is the first thing in your confidence that comes to your head that you're like, I'm afraid of this. I'm worried about this. I don't know what to do if this happens. I don't know how to prepare my horse if this happens or this happens. And so making those little steps, making those little adjustments and getting some kind of program together that you're able to follow those steps to build the six, build your success, build your confidence, build your horse's confidence in you. What are the three ways to get a trained horse? There is three ways and three ways only to get a well-trained, well-disciplined horse. You can either train it yourself. You can pay to have it trained or you can buy it already trained. But let's touch on something. Go back to that Grand Prix jumping horse. That was absolutely amazing. And just freaked the, the trainer out and it ended up coming to my house. I'm thinking, oh, a Grand Prix jumping horse in Redneckville in South Mississippi. No problem. Two things happen. One, every day, all day, we ride ridiculous problem horses. Like I rode a horse around today that was nice and my students was like, it's so nice to see you on a horse that's not trying to kill you. I was like, thanks guys. That's comforting. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> every day right, so, the horse the horse the horse the okay horse, back so the back one thing back. with that that grand prix horse is it didn't scare me uh he was a rearing horse um and he was hot and he was big and I was, another one okay 
That's one. So my mind was clear. With that clarity of mind, do you know how you fix such a complex problem, a show ring issue on a big, fancy trained? Can you know, come on, getting drug in with, with a, a Mercedes horse that always has polo wraps on. Look us up. The Respect Series. All that horse needed to do was give his face and move his butt. That was it. Thanks. That was what it was missing. But it's not uncommon. Okay, don't think about it in horses. Think about it in your vehicle. One fuse can go out. One fuse and render your car useless. One little thing can go wrong. In my truck, the DEF system went out useless. 12 miles per hour on the expressway in Texas coming back from roping. 12 miles per hour. When With a brand new baby. When people are doing 80 miles per hour and we can't get out of their way because we're in the express lane and one, one thing went wrong. So, so many times when you have this issue and the horse is great, but, and I mean, horses have more butts than the Kardashians, I swear. Michael. All the time people say, my horse is great, but my horse is awesome, but when there's a butt, that's a wrench in the, in the plan and the problem. And it's usually something so simple and so fundamental that people don't think to look there. Always look in the beginning and work your way up. That horse was pretty simple. He came in, we worked the respect series for two days. He was good to go. He actually went back to the same show that they sent me from and he went on. They, to that was a, a repeat trainer that we had had multiple horses from. Yeah. So they had reached out and they're like, so we have a really big problem. Um, I know we haven't brought this horse to you. We know your, your minimum is 30 days training. Um, we'd love to have you come down here and, and do a clinic, but we like, we need to, we need this fixed now. The horse jumps. This was Friday morning. The horse needed to jump in a lower class, not Grand Prix on Friday and then go Sunday to jump in the Grand Prix. And so we got it for, that's when we drove down to, I'm mis mixing up my stories. That one we actually drove down to and had to fix on site. Um, and oh my goodness, if you walk into a, a jumping show and you have a flag stick, people lose their oh, yeah. mind. We, we got kicked we, off the facility just for walking with the flag stick, a little desensitizing, cute little, you know, it looks like a feed bag to the feed bag hooked to a stick, but our feed bag was an illegal feed bag. We got kicked to like the back five acre parking lot. Um, what? Hmm? What's that look? <laughs> we, Are you like reliving this traumatic yeah, yeah. moment? It's a walk oh, of shame. Was, walk of shame as we walk out with this 17 and a half hand. hand yeah, no, but, warm but, but again, that, it's so, it's so repetitive for us. That so many times, especially on, on the advanced trained horses, the dressage horses that come in, jumping horses come in, reining horses come in, um, that have an issue. Usually it's something fundamental because they're so educated in college, but something as simple as being able to pull their face and move their butt doesn't work. Well, if you can't turn them left and right when they're under distress, you're in trouble. And like that horse in particular, he had rode for years and he didn't know that he could do that. But once he figured out, oh, I can get away. That's why show horses fall apart. Because the show horse will be fine until he finds, oh, I don't have to show. I can just throw a tantrum right here in the show ring and you can't stop me. Well, that's because there's not layers in place to, to be able to deal with that. The fundamentals uh, are missing. So that was a, a awesome, awesome example of. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. And comfort level and and. Confidence level and discomfort. Why'd you do that? I had such a good thought. Uh -oh. No, I just went away. Sorry. It's okay. I'll catch it back. It'll just be floating around here in a little bit. Um, so we've got a couple questions coming through on here, and there's people asking about the respect series and the respect training. So up until this point, we've had our Team MG membership club. We started in 2018. We're now in 2022. We've been doing these yearly horse health challenges um, that started during COVID. We just kind of looked. We had this was a big confidence kicker for us. So we had just finished in 2020. We had just finished the Michigan Horse Expo. We went up there. We produced our very own standalone Never Give Up Tour, which is the night show that Michael was talking about. It completely sold out. We self-produced it. Michael headlined the expo. We were on cloud nine. Like it could not have been a more amazing experience. Like by far one of the highlights of our career. And Michael and I are so focused on the goal and so focused on all the things that we were doing. And we never realized while we were there in early March, 2020, we don't watch the news or we're really bad about that. I know that there's people that will probably test the fact that we don't do that, but we, we try to stay positive. We try to stay in our own lane um, and, and do our thing and keep working towards our goals. 
And so we had no idea that COVID was even in conversation at that point. It wasn't um, even COVID. It was Corona. Uh, coronavirus. <laughs> yeah. And why, why people drinking that beer? What's going, what's wrong with it? Yeah. I, and, and we started, it was weird that somebody, my best friend, Shelby, she said, look at how cute this is. They have little Germex bottles with their business logo on them. And I'm like, that's really weird. Um, not realizing that these things were starting to become a thing. And um, so we finished that completely sold out show. It's Sunday. We're packing everything up. We're on cloud nine. We hit the road and we're talking about all these big things that we're going to do. And we had multiple never give up tours planned for that year. And we get a phone call that as we're moving out, the expo that's behind us gets canceled. They, they shut down the next expo that's moving into the fairgrounds. And we're like, that's weird. And then it's like within 48 hours, the whole world fell apart. And we're like, what are we going to do? What are, you know, because we, we trained horses. We had our retreats. Like nothing was going to happen with that. But Michael and I, you guys have noticed here, we've definitely went way over on what I was planning to do again for this part of this conversation. Um, we like to talk and we like to be around people and we like to help people. I'm like, what are we going to do if we can't get out of the house and go do all these things? So we put our heads together and we're like, you know what? Everybody's stuck at home. We're going to do a horse help challenge. What's a horse help challenge? I have no idea. So we started this with our membership club. We already had all of our members and we're like, hey, we're going to put on a challenge. We're going to go live for so many days straight, which we went live for 45 so days, days, 45 days straight, so days. an hour, an hour per day covering at least an hour per day covering our respect series, covering lay down and sits and liberty and spinning and raining and mountain shooting and all kinds of craziness just to help people get through COVID, just to get through that experience, to feel like they had some hope that they could do something with their horses. We've done a couple of variations of that since then. And one thing that we've noticed is in our membership club, we have over 700 videos and we just keep building and adding and doing different things. And as we do our program and we see a video we can make, we make another video. And what we found is that as new people would come in, they would just get content overwhelmed. They get thrown into the membership club and there'd be 700 videos to pick from. We're like, okay, we need to, we need to make sure they go through the respect series, which is the foundation of the program that will fix all of your problems. Everything else is just a drill to make it better, to make it better, to make it bigger, to do all the things you want to do. And so we blocked that where you had to watch the respect series first. And once you finish that, then you got to go do all the fun stuff. Well, since they didn't go through that live with us, since they didn't feel like they had the hand holding, since they kind of just got thrown into the membership club when they joined, we were finding that people were having so much content, they didn't know where to start. They felt like they didn't have a path. They didn't have anything that they could keep track of what they were doing. And so, um, and we'll show this to probably, we'll probably bring it out tomorrow. We have what's called our horse help success path. And we revamped and reworked our entire program. And so now- our membership doors, if you've tried to get in, you cannot get into our membership club right now because we've went back through and we've recently re-recorded our entire respect series. All new videos, all new horses. Um, we actually are filming more examples of each thing. So not only are you going to have access to preschool through 12th grade of what it wants, what we want it to look like on a finished horse, we also are going to have the examples of walking through all of those steps with a green horse, a colt start a hot horse, a dull horse, a problem horse to show you all these different reactions, horses that Michael's never worked with. They're not even training horses. We literally called around and we're like, Hey, we need horses that Michael's never seen. We're going to bring them in for three days. And I want to do three days in a row of Michael working through the 12 grades. If the horse passes and they move on, he can explain what that passing looked like. If they fail and he has to do something different, we'll show you what that looks like. So you can see that real life horses that haven't had any of this done to them before. So we've recorded all of that together. The first horse they brought waddled in. He didn't waddle. He did waddle. Waddling is such a strong He was like word. a chestnut walrus. It, he had lots of <laughs> <laughs> At least it wasn't a mare. You're welcome. It wasn't a big waddly chestnut mare. Anywho, um, so we've been filming those new respect series. We had um, five of our members that uh, we had kind of randomly picked five people from our program to go through that series. You're going to hear from them throughout this confidence week. Once Michael and I can learn how to shut up, hopefully three or four days into this, we won't, Oy. we won't talk quite as much, um, but we re-recorded this and it's now called our horse help course. So what that means is for six weeks, we're going to go through that program 
We're going to do all the things that we do in the membership club. So that means that we're going to have our video review sessions on Tuesdays, our horse talk Q&A on Wednesdays, Kelsey's Corner on Thursdays covering certain videos. So every week you'll have a, this is going to be the grade level that we're going to cover. You're going to go through all of those in our brand new platform, our brand new platform for all these videos. There's a little keyword search bar. So once we finish, you can search by keyword, all of the Q and A's that are there, all of the videos that are there. It's going to take you to exactly the part in that video where you get your questions answered, which is great. If for any reason that you feel like you get behind or you haven't watched something or you need to go back and re-reference something and you can't remember what course it was or what topic. And you can just put a little keyword in there to bring you back in, help you get where you want to go. And over those six weeks, it's a live course. You're with us. You're getting your questions answered. We kind of have this no horse left behind program, no person left behind program. We're going to take you with us every step of the way. And the cool thing about this that's different in the membership is it's a one-time payment for it and it's lifetime access. And so people, there's so much criticism and I'm in all these different courses learning about how to build courses and how to build memberships and how to make things successful and how to grow a community. And one of the biggest things that you get in trouble for is they're like, don't undervalue yourself. Don't, don't charge so little for something because you want to make sure that people see the value in it. So charge enough that people see the value. But for me and for us and conversations that we've had with this, is there's so many things out there in the horse world. And a lot of times things aren't as accessible or especially right now, not knowing what the economy is going to do. People just want to go out and enjoy their horses and they want to have fun. Just like in COVID, we did that whole thing for free with this horse help course and it being the first time that we launched it um, and having you guys go through it with us and be able to get your questions answered and give us feedback too. What would you want to see different? What could really make this be a big difference for you? What we're doing with that is in the future, I want that to be going forward. So basically after we end this confidence coaching course, it's going to be 197. But what I want to do for the founding members and everybody who joins us right away after this confidence coaching week, it'll be $97, which sounds ridiculous. That's literally cheaper than two riding lessons. Um, if you think about that and the amount of value that you're going to get, the amount of hand holding that you're going to get through this process, just because one, we want to help you. And two, without your feedback and without you guys being involved in this, we can't make that better for the next generation. We can't make that better for the next group of people that are going to come through because all of our programs are building off of that system, building off of that material. So for the next pe group of people that go through the horse help course, they're going to get access to all the Q and A's and all of the video recordings and all the things that you guys have. They're going to get access to that to look at it in the beginning before they ever even have a chance to ask their questions. They're going to have all of that material that they can just type into their search bar and easy reference. So more details coming on that. Um, don't have to worry about it right now. I'm not going to let you guys miss out on the link of it, but just to kind of give you an idea of this is something that's been in the works and it's a project that we've been working super hard on. Um, but now we're going to go into our q and A. I've got some questions that we've saved up. I'm going to pull them up on my phone real quick that are from yesterday. Some of our members have put some questions in that I'm going to add in there. If there's anything that you can think that you want to add, throw it in the comments. We'll go back through and find these questions um, that we can add in for the future, add in for future reference. Um, and we'll try to just get as much done as while we still have people on here and you guys are watching. Feel free to fall off whenever you're ready to fall off. There will be a replay. You'll get access to that. This video will stay up, so you'll be able to find it. Um, one of the first questions, and we'll go ahead and pull it up on here. The way that I do this is I do this cool little thing. What? I Did you just laugh? Are you looking at how many questions? I, just, I saw how, how far there's, you scroll. There's not that many questions. You I swear. I, three times. There's, there's not that yeah, many. She, she there's not. Like this no. On, on the screen. And no, it was, no. no. It was not. <laughs> no. Okay. Here you go. Okay. Release the beast. It's on you. Okay. What you got? You asked the question. I got the answer. What do you do when horses are buddy sour? Erika. Give the, the horse a reason to pay attention to you. You have kids. Your kids want to hang out with their friends. That's adorable. When your mother says it's time to go, well, hot diggity dog, it's time to go. So many times we want to be our horse's best friend so bad. It's like that mother that wants to be their kid's best friend has the kids that are very disrespectful. The mother that wants to be the mother has kids that say, yes, ma'am, we're coming. Be the second mother there. 
don't be afraid to be the leader for your horse. Don't be afraid to gain your horse's respect. Um, again, using the respect series, getting that horse backing up, getting. But what's your what's your favorite buddy sour exercise in the respect series? So out of the grade levels, what would you say is your favorite for buddy sour? Uh, if your horse is screaming, if they're yelling at their friend, yeah, so, so when you're on the ground, what are you going to do? Kindergarten, first grade. What are you going to do when you're in the saddle? Those two things. Uh, kindergarten, first grade. When I do it, when I get in the saddle, I'm going to get that horse uh, really. Where, excited, flexing emotion. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to get that horse where he's he's spiraling and backing up crooked. Uh, Basically, at the end of the day, get them where they're relaxing, put in their head down, get them back on a leash. Give them a reason to pay attention to you. That's why they call it the respect series, because you gain the respect of the horse by doing it. All right. This is Miss Barb. This is related to last night's talk. I think we are all most critical of ourselves. I know I think I'm doing terrible and pick my videos apart. Then Michael watches them and sees the good things. How do we give ourselves a break and not be so critical, but at the same time, look for improvement? Barb. Okay, so a, a lot of times is this. Remember in the beginning, one of the things that's so refreshing about this program and what we're doing is in the beginning, quite frankly, when we suck at something, the learning curve is off the charts. That's why I love going places and absolutely stinking at dressage or stinking at roping or stinking at barrels or stinking at You shooting. didn't stink at dressage. You just knit the way you're stretching times. Something like that. I just not being afraid to stink because what is the adrenaline rush there? When I absolutely suck at what I'm trying to do, the learning curve is amazing. And you get that endorphin rush. When you master something, when you really try to be doing it at a high level, when you try to do it at a high level, hey, fix the thing here. Fix what? Uh, if you want that off of there. Yeah. When you do oh. it at a high level, uh, yeah, I felt like the guy from Home Improvement. You can only see this much. When you do something at a very high level, you're scratching and clawing for those little 1%, the little inch better. So whenever I look at your guys' videos, um, and, and Miss Barb is one that has been sending videos in since we've been accepting videos for years. And it's so apparent. Wow. Look at where you were and look at where you are. It's amazing. Um, so look back at your old videos. If you have, that's the beautiful thing about having, make sure videos. you make videos, yeah. like M make videos you're working at home. Anything, just you have it for your own reference. Anything you're doing, anything that you're trying to get better at, you have to have your mile markers. So you know how far you've come. Um, so looking back at those old videos, it's kind of like when you're on a diet or you're working out uh, or you're on, on a program and doing something. In the beginning, nobody sees the progress. And then in the beginning, you start seeing progress. But very quickly, you, you feel like you're plateaued. You feel like you can't lose any more weight. You feel like you can't get any bigger, any stronger. And then you see somebody who hasn't seen you in a while and they're like, damn, you look good. I was like, oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't notice because you're looking in the mirror every day and you don't see those changes or you see a picture uh, of yourself after you've been dining hard or or working out hard. And you're like, oh, oh, OK, that's what you see whenever I see you guys uh, working your horses and I see how far you've progressed in the beginning. The, the high that you have is that we're not very proficient at something. So you're gaining so much ground so quickly. You're not getting 1% better a day. You're getting 100% better a day, day after day after day. And what is a difficult transition is when you get so good that now we're scratching and clawing for that 1% better and 1% better. That's That lets you know whenever you start not plateauing, but you go from really learning a lot quick and then you get to a place where you have to work very hard and be very disciplined and diligent to get a little bit better and a little bit better that lets you know that you're really getting to the end of being you're getting really proficient at it right what do you do to get your horse to slow down when you first get on tracy all right so one of the very first things that i do um again going through going through it's gonna sound repetitive going through the respect series Control the head, control the horse. It's 12 exercises. Yeah. And then, well, 13 if you count preschool. But literally, that's that's why it's so easy to reference and so easy to talk about. Because it's yeah. just like, okay, pick so, one of these. So this is hop, one of these is your answer. On. Fifth grade is flexing. Um, sixth grade is disengaging. Already, you, you're getting control of that horse's head and getting them softer and easier. Just disengaging. Letting them walk off. And every time that they take a hot step or pick up a gear... 
you take their butt from them and cross their back feet up, horses are strong and powerful and forward in a straight line. If we can simply just take their butt away from them and give them the rain back, take their butt away from them, give them their the rain back, uh, which is in sixth grade, very quickly you could take the wind out of that horse's tail and not have them. Then when you start adding in um, – backing up crooked with some spirals i mean it's just amazing what we use words like crooked in our yeah, education yeah, program. yeah that, that's our style of, back the horse up crooked <laughs> drop his head all right sorry one more how is the easiest way to get your horse stand while mounting she'll stand fine any other time tracy i have something for you give me one second what are you going to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the link to the come get me trick. The come get me trick is by far my favorite way to get a horse to stand. Absolutely still. And the come get me trick is like having valet parking. The horse will not only stand still, but he'll pull up right over to you, put the saddle right beside you and kind of look at you like, get on, let's go. The reason it works so amazing is out of all my travels and all my studies, it's the only method that I've seen, the only approach that I've seen that there is a physical repercussion if they move, if you move, I'm going to tap you on the hiney with this crop. If you stand still, I'm going to leave you alone. Everything else is desensitizing. Everything else is waiting. All of it works. Come give me trick works the best. You will get that horse standing like a statue right underneath you. It's awesome. So check out that link and <laughs> look at, look at that word for re for re 99. No, no, don't, no, no, free all day. no, 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 free all day. For any of you that were, right there. were a part of, right there, guys. we gave our membership for free this summer. So that way, because we're in this transition and we're switching over to this brand new platform. Um, and so this whole summer, we gave away three free months. And this man, and the word free, <laughs> my good gosh, you're like a cheap, car, a cheap car salesman. Good grief. All right. Let's see. Next question. How to handle a spook that results in a head duck and spin. Oh, yes. And me on the ground. Harriet. All right, Miss Harriet. The head duck and spin is really not our issue. Our lack of control of the horse's head. We got to get them soft where they're more worried about the rain than the spook duck and spin. So what we want to do is start on the ground, getting them soft in the face first, and then spooking them from the ground. So when the, they spook, they run into the lead rope. And they figure out, oh, I better not spin, duck, and, and duck and spin and do this, that, and other, or there's a repercussion, and that's running into your body weight on the lead rope, which is not awesome. And then we're going to put that in the saddle. We are going to purposefully make the horse uncomfortable, purposefully spook them when we know that it's coming so we can be prepared. And when that horse even thinks about duck, he already runs into one rein, uh, which is the exact same thing that happens on the ground with one lead rope. Uh, and that's how we're going to get the day – that your horse respects the reins more than it respects the surge to run off, it will never run off with you again. The day that your horse respects your, your reins, the day that your dog respects the leash more than the urge to run off or fight the other dog or eat the neighbor's cat or jump up on a little kid, it will never do those things because now it's trained. Now it's obedient and it won't do those things. But the key here is to make sure you have the horse soft and easy and then make sure that you have them soft and easy when they're under distress. And that second part right there is the part that most people miss because most people are shying away from discomfort. Well, discomfort, if you if you shy from it, it's gonna come find you, okay? And that discomfort, dog, it bites. It'll <laughs> bite you right on the butt. You're super redneck today. Don't be afraid to be uncomfortable. Don't be afraid to make your horse uncomfortable because this distress uh, and uncomfortable moments and things like it's just part of life it's not about what happens to you everybody has something that happened to them it's not about what happens to you it's about what do you do about it so by letting that horse get uncomfortable by spooking that horse whenever you're in a controlled environment and you more importantly are prepared and aware that's how you're going to get rid of that head duck and spin all right so i don't know I just see Jack on this one. I don't know if Jack has a membership, so I don't know if he's actually working on kindergarten and he's having this issue. So kindergarten is basically backing your horse out of your space, getting respect. Um, and to pass that, they have to back out of your space without any physical pressure, which means you don't have to tap hard on the lead rope. You don't have to do anything to get them to back out of your space. Um, so Jack says, what do you do when you have a horse that charges at you when you're trying to back them up out of your space? Um, so a couple questions with this too, to keep in mind. And 
I'm not going to answer it for you, but I am a girl. So sometimes this sounds a little bit better coming from a girl at the end of the day, when you're working with horses and anything that you're doing, your safety, your health and your space is the most important thing in the world. And unfortunately in the horse industry, a lot of things have been come common knowledge to carry this like fiberglass baton, a carrot stick, whatever you want to call it in the training program. But at the end of the day, if that same horse will run you over when you're asking him to back out of your space, that same horse will be willing to run you over when you're picking up feed pans in the pasture, when you're trying to walk and get a different horse out of the pasture. Um, so one thing that we do within our program that we want you to be comfortable with is understanding that it's okay to put your hand up. And if said horse runs into you at the very least having your hand up, you're going to get, Oh, sorry. <laughs> at the very least you're going to get pushed out of harm's way and not get run over by your horse. Um, when you're asking that horse to back up out of your space, and you have a horse that's, um, there's a difference between failing kindergarten, which means they won't back out of your space. You feel like you're having to back, back, back. You feel like you're having to ding on the lead rope and they're just not understanding it. That's not passing. So we're going to do something to help you pass. If that horse is willing to run over and physically hurt you, then you're going to have to increase the level of pressure that you apply forward to get that horse to back out of your space. For some horses, that can get a little means getting a little bit more crazy, tapping a little harder on the lead rope, having an MG halter. Um, our what our horsemanship halter that we train everybody with, that we ride everybody with, it has extra knots on the nose and it's built for riding. So everything that we do from the ground communicates directly to the saddle. And that's going to have a little bit more bite to it when you ask them to back up out of your space. If you feel like you're physically in danger, do not be afraid to have a lunge whip, to have a crop, to have something with you. You're going to have to figure out what level of pressure it's going to take to make sure that they don't hurt you in that process. And think about it in the pasture. You have the alpha mare. And the alpha mare, the way that she communicates with all the other horses, again, this horse running you over is not bad behavior. It's horse behavior. And that's how they communicate. So you have to think when you're communicating back, how does that relationship work? So in the pasture, when an alpha mare wants to run somebody off, she attacks into that space. She approaches that person and or that horse and that horse takes a step backwards. So for every step backwards that you take to that horse, you become the beta. So if you are not comfortable standing your ground and applying that pressure forward and being that person that says, hey, do not run me over. I love you. I feed you. I do everything to keep you happy. At the very least, you deserve your horse to respect your space and not hurt you. Um, if you are not comfortable being the person that makes those steps, find somebody in your group, find a friend to have one conversation. One of my biggest pet peeves in the horse industry is people will crop and crop and crop and kick and kick and kick and and have to get behind and make a rope of people to get a horse into a horse trailer, all these things to apply pressure. And they do that for the entire extent of the time that they have a horse. They're always having the same conversations, feeling like they're always having to add pressure, add pressure, add pressure. In a conversation like that, where your health is at risk, it is better to have one conversation to get the point across and to never have to ask that horse or never have to use a crop to protect your space again, just so they understand that your bubble is sacred. At the end of the day, if you get hurt, if you get injured by your horse, who is going to take care of them? Who is going to make sure that they have a good life? And by the same token, we talk about this a lot in our program, is the, the best gift that you can give to a horse is an education. Because at the end of the day, if they're educated, somebody will love them. Right? Did I get that right? There's one more part of it. There we go. You do it. If they're what? Self-discipline is the pathway to freedom. You build a disciplined horse, you're creating a horse that somebody will love. It's so much better, more than being athletic, more than being great at their job, more than being a good jumper, more than being whatever it is. If that horse would just be respectful and disciplined and, and willing to, to do their job, somebody somewhere will love them. So like she says, uh, education, uh, discipline, uh, dependability, forgivingness, all those are things that any and every horse can have. Blind horses, one-eyed horses, polka dot horses, skinny, fat, tall, ugly, athletic, unathletic. All these horses can have that. Those are basic things, basic things that we call character. What is character? We want to build character in our horse. We want to build character in our kids and our dogs. Character is simply doing the right thing when it's not easy. Anybody can be good when the environment is perfect. Anybody can be a good person when it behooves them, but it takes good character 
to be a good person when it's not easy, when the pressure's on. Well, for a horse, it's very important that they can do that even when they're uncomfortable. And one conversation, especially with the horse that already has that ability to charge and that, that problem going forward, one conversation now will not only save you and save that horse, one conversation and making sure that that horse understands your respect and understands your bubble and giving a horse respect is going to keep that horse from ending up in a bad place. So horses that don't have somebody who's willing to have that conversation and help fix that problem and make sure that that's established with people, you keep those horses from going to kill pens. You keep those horses from ending up at a rescue facility because they will hurt somebody. At the end of the day, a lot of you that are out there, there is nobody out here watching this live right now that weighs 1,200 pounds can go out in the pasture and get kicked by, like the alpha mare does to all the other horses that are out in the pasture and just keep on going like it never happened. That breaks us. That hurts us. And that keeps us from doing what we love. So make sure that if you don't take anything else away from this confidence coaching week and you don't take anything else away from this program, respect and keeping your bubble sacred is one of the biggest things that will absolutely change your life and change your relationship with your horse. Okay. I'm off my soapbox. That was a lot for that question. I, but it, it's frustrating because if you have that conversation and you say, Hey, don't let that horse run you over. I don't want to be looked at poorly because I'm going to protect my space. It's frustrating because yeah. we travel around the world. And we see people with broken shoulders, broken faces, plates in their head, broken legs, broken femurs, broken hips, broken backs. broken backs. And it's not just a horse problem. We see it in horses because it's our thing. But we live in a place where you can't discipline your children. You can't discipline your dog. You can't discipline this. You can't let them be who they are. Let them be whoever they want. No, no, don't. <laughs> don't but, let your three-year-old make their own decisions the reason that you're an adult is because you have life experience so now guide the person the whole idea of evolution and the whole idea of parenting is we get to start where our parents finish that i couldn't be in this position if i didn't start my horse training career from where my father finished if i just went out there and said ah, i'm going to start from the beginning again i would never be in this position he was a great parent that gave me discipline and showed me what was right, what was wrong, what to stand for. And I was able to start where his career finished. Well, it's the same way when you're guiding a horse or you're guiding a kid. You want to show them right from wrong and give them a repercussion whenever there's wrong. Hurting people is wrong. All right. Next question. How do you know what type of bridle or bit is the proper one to use on your horse? And if it's effective, I ride mine in a Western bridle but doesn't seem to always understand what I'm asking with the reins. But if he's ridden a halter, he's, his head responds better. Morgan. All right, Miss Morgan. So the spectrum of bridles is as simple as this. The greener the horse is, the more margin of error. So I'm talking about our halters, what we ride everything in. Then once we get out of our halter, which has a huge margin of error, real soft, very, very flexible. Then we go to a snaffle. A snaffle has a big margin of error because it's just basically pushing on one side of the face or the other. Very bendy, very movy. From there, we go to a snaffle with shanks and the margin of error gets smaller. And then when we get to our finished bridle, that would be a solid bridle. It doesn't move at all. The margin of error is very small. But by that time, the horse already knows how to do everything off of our legs. He already knows his job. He already knows how to carry himself. So that is, is what we're looking for. So the bridle that we use depends on two things the level of education that our horse has and two the job that we are trying to acquire you know dress like the position that you want um for bridles use the bridle that is heading in the direction that you want that's why it's so important to know who you want your horse to be i see a lot of people the horse will be putting his head down the person will be jerking their head up jerking their pick your head up pick your head up the bridle in the horse's mouth every time you touch the reins is saying put your head down put your head down but the person is using a tool that they have no idea what it's for. Uh, so they think that the horse is being bad when indeed the horse is just doing what the bridle is telling them to. So it's important that that's why so many of our clients just ride with the halter because it's so, so simple that you can't get it wrong. And it scares uh, people. Anytime yeah. they go places, people are like, Oh my gosh, you're riding in just a halter. And it's like, you have no idea how safe that person is in just a halter compared to, um, their horse that's been through our program is riding in a halter versus your horse who hasn't been through a program and is riding in a bit that goes from here to here for the shank 
You are not safer than them. Uh, I promise you. A bit will not fix a horse. If they did, none of us trainers would have a job. There is no magic bit that fix every horse. I promise. Um, there is no stopping bit that will stop a runaway horse. I promise. Even if you did stop that horse with that bridle, the moment that something else bothers him more than the fear of that bridle, he's going to take you. If not, again, you wouldn't pay for a trainer. We're more expensive uh, than the bridle. So it all comes down to education. All right. How do you get a cold and lazy horse trained to be responsive when they act totally different in different settings? My mare gets super hot in certain settings versus most settings she's super lazy. Like parades, she thinks it's a race versus at home or even at play days or other events. You have to remind her that she can actually walk, LOL, and it's just random settings. People people think she's different, completely different horse, Crystal. Has anybody seen the movie My Big Fat Greek Wedding? There is a fella on there and he says, Give me a word, any word. I show you how it's Greek. Word, word. Word. I know people can't hear you. Word. You're already muffled and okay. now you're Greek. So, give me a problem, any problem. I'll show you how you don't have enough control of your horse's head. Left and right, being able to control their face and their butt controls where you're going to go. So, bucking, running, and rearing, the things that don't behoove your health and well-being, they happen in a straight line. Our ability to pull them off center left and right, cross their back feet up, shuts that down takes that away from them also up and down controls how they go so if your horse is speeding off and wanting to go somewhere our ability to draw their head downward and get their pole the top of their head below their withers which is above their shoulders when their head goes below the shoulders or their back it releases an endorphin that kills adrenaline gets that horse to slow down and relax more importantly the horse that's lazy that doesn't want to go Think about this scenario. You have a bum lazy of a horse that you have to spur and pony kick to get to walk. But the mare that's in the field with him, if she just flicks the ear at him, he takes off running like he's in the Kentucky Derby. And she didn't kick him, bite him, do it. She just flicked the ear or showed some teeth and he ran off. Is he lazy or is he disrespectful? It's to be said. Right. Excellent. Let's see. Horse is great. It's me that needs the work, needs to work with my seat. Hope you will cover this during coaching week. Denise, what are some seat tips that you can give us? I might share, I might share a video about that. Could be good. But that's so in many times group. we are so worried about sitting pretty, Miss Denise. We are so ready about sitting up, sitting straight, sitting this, sitting that. I won a lot of national championships doing that as a kid. With that being said, bronc riders and bull riders lay down on their animal. So many people, the two biggest problems they have in horsemanship, no matter where I'm at in the world, they grab too much reins, which presses all the buttons, and they sit too far forward. The more forward you get, the more vulnerable you are. The more forward you get, the less balance you have. So unless the sport in which you are playing, unless the, the sport in which you are part of demands you to sit forward, um, say jumping, endurance, um, dressage for the upright seat showing with the upright seat outside of that the more your shoulders get back behind your hips the more you sit back on your butt the more your heels come down in front of you the more balanced you're going to be and more importantly the more clarity that you're going to find in your in your mind so many times we do these confidence retreats where people come in and spend a week with us they've lost their confidence they fell off a horse they had a spill this happened that happened they lost their confidence michael where does confidence start People want to say this flowery stuff. Oh, it starts in education and knowledge. And that confidence starts in your keister. If you aren't sitting down on your butt, if you aren't sitting back, it doesn't matter how much you know. And I swear I've seen it thousands of times. If you're sitting so upright that you're on your teeter totter and you feel like you're going to fall, again, we go right back to your brain's primal instinct is to keep you alive. If you feel like you're going to fall, it's kind of like slipping in the kitchen when you lose your breath. <gasps> Or you slip on skates and you sprain your wrist. Well, you didn't say, go, go, gadget arm, save me. Your brain said, your equilibrium trip, we're falling, and your arm reacted. On your saddle, what happens when you trip your equilibrium? You latch on like a spider monkey. I've seen people hold on to the horn with both hands. I've seen people throw the reins at the horse's neck and grab onto mane. I've seen people bear hug the horse's neck. All these are involuntary responses. They never saw that on a video. They never read that in a book. 
but it happened because they were sitting too far forward. So, so much of gaining our seat and getting confident, again, broad stroke statement. I understand if you're a jumper. I understand if you're an endurance rider. Uh, we just rode 300 miles to Africa, all sitting up and sitting forward because we were cantering endurance style the whole time. Oh, I to relate complete, that completely understand that. What I'm saying is if you're trying to build your seat and build your confidence, sitting on your butt, sitting back and relax is the way to do that. I forgot that I was supposed to bring the whole confidence thing back full circle and talk about how the quote for you today is um, about leaving your, your behind in the past, right? Behind mm -hmm. in the past which I was going to relate to two pointing in Africa and how it's like life. And you're, you're standing up in your stirrups and you're going and you're going. And then there's a tree and a branch that swings past you. And sometimes you dodge them. Sometimes you hit them, but you don't let that keep you from going forward to go see the giraffes and go see all the cool stuff. Um, you can't let those obstacles keep you from coming off your horse. Right. Oh, look, look at what I did there. Good. Thanks okay. for the reminder. It's fine. It's not relevant anymore because if the same, the people are not going to. We, we passed the moment. <laughs> we, we did pass the moment. It's fine. It's a learning experience. Okay. I was watching the help videos from yesterday. Michael stated a couple times about a gated horse with will canter on a loose rein. I have a two-year-old Tennessee walking horse. He has always gated. Canters runs when he's loose playing. Just started under saddle on a loose rein. He still just gates. How important is it to train him to canter? Mary. Mary, you know how important it is to train him to canter? Do you, do you want him to canter? If so, it's of the mo utmost importance. If you have no intention of cantering and don't care if your, your kid knows how to canter, your, your, your horse knows how to canter, then it's not important at all. It's all about knowing who you want your horse to be knowing who you want to be. So if you want to make a Western pony out of your gated horse that can also gate, but it can be Western horse, then it's very important. The same way I've sold gated horses to people who didn't really want to gate and they never gate their horse. The horse is always either walk, trot or cantering and that's okay too. Oh, so it all comes down to what, do what you, you want. want to do. Exactly. Literally. That is, yeah. that is like the whole horse world. And that's something that's so frustrating is stop letting people tell you, how you should enjoy your horse. Or telling you what you want to do. How is somebody else going to tell you what you want to do? It, you're in your head. You do what you want to do. If you want to teach that horse to canter, well, then absolutely. The earlier you teach him and the more normal you make it, then obviously it's going to be a lot easier for the horse. Uh, as opposed to getting a 10-year-old horse who's never cantered and now you're asking him to canter. Well, that's going to be uh, a little difficult. Absolutely plausible and possible. Um, but if you're cold starting him, if you're starting your, your Tennessee Walker and you show from the very beginning, hey, cantering is just one more thing we do, it's not going to be a problem at all. Cool. Next question. Right. All right. Robert says, Kelsey, did you brush by the razor blade trees in Africa? I had one little bitty thorn mark. Did you get any thorn marks? We did have uh, one of our friends that was on the safari with us got cut by a bunch of them. Um, I, he was riding too close, I think, to somebody, and it came and then, back and, and got him. And then Kelsey thought that we were in the ocean. She was like, blood? No. They'll smell the, the blood. The lions will smell it. No, so I was trying so, to avoid him. It's he had blood shark. running down his arm. It's not in They're the ocean. They're lions. Ah, yeah. It's not a shark. I remember. Okay. Wait. Okay. You, you think that... Next oh. time, next time, I'll let you go with a cut arm, and we'll just walk into the pride of twenty-two lions and let me know how it goes for you. Cowboy, blood. it's a real fear. I, I literally, so I stayed away from him. The rest, I did not want my horse to be cantering next to his horse until we got back and he washed that off his arm. It's fine. It's all fine. It's not funny. It's kind of funny. What is the best way to deal with a biter? Is it possible that it's pain related, vindic vindictive? What is a horse saying if they reach out and bite? Not a nip, but a hold on bite. Thanks for your help, Charlene. Miss Charlene, it could it could say multiple things. The most uh, saying is that they don't respect you. Biting, kicking, bucking, running, rearing, striking, running into you. All this bad behavior is not bad behavior. It's just horse behavior. The bite that will break your collarbone or pull muscle out or tear the skin. We've had two, two ladies, two ladies that have came here that have had to have a, is it a mastectomy when they have to have their, like the, the horse did it for them and they had to have the surgery. Two, two women had their breasts ripped off by a horse that bit them. And that was the, the enough of the red flag with the biting issue 
that it finally came to us for training. Do not let it get to that point. Yeah. Do not keep the, if so, the horse has that big of an issue, make sure that they are always out of your bubble. In both of those scenarios, it had nothing to do with pain. It was the horse was disrespectful. Whenever he throws a bite at another horse, the other horse moves, he gets a release. In those cases, both of those horses had got so many wins off of people and had scared people and bull rushed up the front of the stalls and bit people over the fence that they got a release and they were used to seeing people running from them. And the way that we were able to fix that is to convince them that it wasn't the best idea to do that and simply getting them to be the one to back up and them to be the one to 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 worry about the pressure instead of us and us not giving our ground us not avoiding them or and just dealing with the issue head on so what that tells me the most is that the horse is lacking respect they're trying to bluff you they're trying to they're trying to get a release from you to make sure to gain that horse's respect back that joker up keep him out of space where he can't bite you and get that horse's feet feet moving backwards until that horse says yes ma'am i'm so sorry I did not mean to offend you. And when you get that reaction, that horse is going to stop biting at you. And, and make them earn their ability. So the thing that we're really big on, we want the horse to respect you. We want your bubble to be sacred. But that's on your time. At 100% of the time, that horse is not allowed to enter unless you invite them into your bubble. You can love them, kiss them, give them cookies out of your mouth, hug on them, do whatever you want. But it's on your time and your terms, not on their terms. And so one thing to remember with that is, you need to make sure that that horse respects you enough and you've been through that process before you break that line and let your guard down. Because that's kind of what had happened with the two horses that had dismembered their owners is, you know, it's just a little nip or it was just a, horses are not just creatures of habit, but they're always looking to fight for that totem pole, fight for that spot in the herd. Every time you turn a horse out with a new set of horses, they're always trying to figure that out. So if today it's a little nip, Tomorrow might be a little bit more of a nip. The next day, it's going to be a real bite. The next time, they're going to draw blood. They're going to keep pushing until they establish where that hierarchy is, establish who's alpha, beta. So if you can step in and say, no, 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 ma'am, no, sir, not, not going to happen. Watch, not going to happen. No. And that's you being the mayor that's looking back at them and saying, I'm pinning my ears. I'm going to bite you back, which, I mean, could be a method. It just depends on the day. Don't do it. They, you you have <laughs> how they, many horses have you bit? Bad. How many horses have you bit in your history? Well, horse bit oh, me first. Oh goodness! It's all everything is fine. Okay. Other than completing the respect series, what are some exercises to help you with barn sour? If you successfully completed the respect series and pushed your horse out of their comfort zone, this will fix that issue. So, what steps are they going to go back and revisit and see where the issue is? Where's the most common place that you're going to be having? If you're already in saddle, most people, by the time they figure out the horse's barn saddle, they're already under saddle. So, if the horse is going forward, disengaging and getting them backing up crooked are going to be your main things. But again, so many folks, they are going through the motions and they're not asking, why am I doing this exercise? What am I looking for? It's important to know why you're doing the exercise. And when you're doing the exercise, you're seeking you're seeking resistance like a gold miner looking for gold i'm looking for little pockets and nuggets of resistance and daring them uh to not heal daring them to try to booger off it and go back to the other horses and when they do i'm fixing it by softening them getting them easier drawing their attention back to me attention is like a muscle and most people don't even know that they're working on attention uh, most people don't even know that attention is something that needs to be obtained by their horse your horse is not your pet. It's your dog that does obedience, okay? It's your obedience horse from now on. And your obedience, obedience, yeah, it's your obedience <laughs> horse. You need your horse to be obedient. And I, I don't know why I've never Stop heard. Stop peeing on the sofa. I've never heard this in a, in a video or seen this on a book, but a horse needs to be obedient. You want your dog to be obedient. And if they're not, what, they chew up your shoes? If your horse is not obedient, you break your head. You break your back. It's not awesome. It's like a car not being obedient. You're going to crash. Not cool. You need simply that when you say stop or whoa or back or give or pay attention to me, they need to go or stop or back or pay attention to you. And it's that simple. And so many times we're just going through the motions because somebody told us to, but we're not looking that. Hey, are you paying attention to me? No matter what's back there. If I pick up this rain, are, is your undivided attention on this rain? Okay, no, I'm going to give you a reason to pay attention to this rain. It could be something like backing them up crooked. 
or disengage in their hindquarters. The simplest, easiest way to re give your horse a repercussion is to know the horse and know what they suck at. Yeah. Anytime you do something you suck at, it takes your undivided attention. I can work a problem horse that's trying to murder me and still have a conversation and tell jokes because it's what I do for 15 hours a day. So I'm pretty comfortable or, with or it. Or 18. You look like you're getting a little, if, <laughs> running out of juice. Your little meter is going down. I go to work on my truck, don't talk to me. Don't call me. I got the YouTube video on because I suck at mechanic work. So it takes my undivided attention. I can focus on nothing else. So if you use that simple logic on your horse, know what they're not great at. If they're really good at disengaging and moving their butt, well, then don't use moving their butt as the, the thing. If spinning them in a circle, which is seems to be a lot of people's go-to for everything, if your horse spins awesome in a circle, well, then that's not a good go-to. Know what your horse is not good at and then do something that you already want them to get better at. Anyway, um, anytime that their attention goes away or they're not paying attention to you, very quickly you'll hone in on their undivided attention. Okay, you're fading on me. So I have a bunch of questions left on here. I just posted another one on here. We're going to answer these two questions that I have left. If you've posted a comment, or, yeah, a, com a question in the comments, don't worry. We're going to get to it tomorrow. If for some reason you're at the tail end of this and we don't quite get through them tomorrow, we'll get through them the next day. We have a week together. We won't stop. We're not. We're not going to miss you. Okay. Answered. If for any reason your question didn't get answered, it is completely after we go through and we get a couple days worth of trying to get everybody caught up here. Uh, if for any reason your question doesn't get answered, feel free to reach out to me at any time. Gascon Horsemanship at gmail.com. Send us a message on the Facebook page. However you reach out, we're going to be able to answer it. Give you the Give you get you pointed in the correct we direction. We are here for you guys. We have we have um, this information for you guys. She has poured her heart and soul <laughs> into putting all this information in one place, and I have spent my heart and soul going out here to find this information and see what works. And the video and together, after video after video. Together, we are bringing this to you guys. We are not doing this time. We're not going anywhere. Yeah. So don't don't feel like we're not going to miss your question. I've got. I'll go through here tomorrow. I'll put them all in a Word document, and I'll just keep adding them to the list. The ones that we're doing right now were from yesterday. I'm just trying to make sure that we get caught up so nobody feels left out. So two more questions. This one is not one of the questions that we had up. So tomorrow, every Thursday, we do Kelsey's Corner, which is like my behind the scenes. So after we finish our confidence topic for the day, we're going to do Kelsey's Corner. For Kelsey's Corner, tomorrow I'm going to start walking you guys through how to get access to the respect series, what the horse help course is going to look like, the links for when that's going to be available. We'll kind of talk through that whole process, answer questions, and then we'll do open Q&A again after this. We're probably going to push our Africa video a little bit later into the confidence coaching week, um, just so we can make sure that you guys are getting real information. The Africa trip is exciting for us, and we're super pumped to share that with you. But at the end of the day, your Af our Africa trip video is probably not going to help you fix your horse. It might. You might just see inspiration and be like, oh my gosh, they're riding in the wild with zebras. I could ride a zebra. Don't do it. I don't recommend. Um, so we will give you information on that, Louise. It'll be coming very soon. All right. This will be our last question for the evening. Once a horse is solid with the laydown trick, would it be possible to teach them to be mounted from this position as long as it's safe for the horse and rider? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm taking it. It's my turn. You're, Absolutely. No, mine. Da, 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 da. But with that being said, it is not the go-to for physically uh, impaired folks or folks who don't have good balance or folks who are just learning. We use the come get me trick for that. A lot of times we want the lay down for folks who have a hard time getting on a horse. The problem is a lot of times the people who have a hard time getting on a horse have a hard time riding it up. So that horse has to get his front feet under him. And get his butt under him, and a lot of times it's that, not a smooth process. That most motion of the time. isn't the best for them if they can, if they can build a stable mounting block or a stable uh, set of stairs to get up. It's a lot simpler to teach to come give me trick. But absolutely, we if you're doing it for fun and you're doing it because you're lazy like me, you can also teach the horse to lay down from the saddle. So then you can just get off, snuggle your horse, let him eat some grass, and then get back on your horse that direction. Um, so if you've been through the Respect Series and then you've been in our membership, you went there and you've done the trick training. So we've had the sit, the smile, the lay down, liberty, all that fun sit stuff. Sit down on the couch? Sit down on the couch. Drink yes. a beer? Yes. Okay. This is my story. You oh, just sorry. stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Um, so like, for instance, I did the Mustang makeover with my horse Tarzan. 
And we have a, a no rope tap lay down process that you can take them through. And so I wanted to show, you know, if you're going to do that method, which can be a little bit slower, if you can use a leg rope to kind of show your process and demonstrate it, it just makes things a little bit clearer, a little quicker. Um, but with my horse, I went through and showed going through and just doing it all from the tap, just not just tapping the leg, going through that whole process. Um, so once you have the lay down, you can just tap the ground and your horse lays down on the ground. Then you can start moving that cue to where somebody you're sitting in the saddle and somebody can tap the ground while you're in the saddle and the horse understands, okay, even with feeling a cinch, even with feeling a little bit confined from that, you can still lay down with the saddle on. And then you can actually put that cue. So for like Tarzan, I put that cue up on the front of his shoulder, um, up on the top, not where you would put a rear cue, but um, for a lay down cue. So then that way I can ask that and not ask, somebody's not going to accidentally touch that button. We're not going to be at a retreat and somebody's going to be riding Tarzan playing a soccer game and they accidentally kick the lay down button or touch the lay down button and he just lays down mid soccer game. Um, so just make sure whenever you start putting cues for things like that, put them out of the way where you have to think about where to ask for it, um, not where somebody's going to accidentally press that button. And also if you can make sure that you don't make that button where your farrier is going to accidentally press it every time that they shoe or trim your horse, it's also... Um, considerate of you the voice of experience rings yeah. so true yeah so many so many things so many and it's it is retrainable so people get concerned oh my gosh i'm gonna mess this up i'm gonna do that i'm gonna do that everything that michael's learned like he's had to reprogram and go through and retrain things if he does something and you don't even know you don't know when you're teaching the lay down you don't even think about that like i wonder how it's gonna go if i put the cue for the lay down on the back of the leg and i pinch the back of the leg to get the horse to lay down and then the farrier goes to pick the foot up or you go to pick a foot up and the horse lays down you're like shit that was a bad idea probably didn't think that one through that is our uh our horse training evolution to where we are now um so let us do all of let those moments already <laughs> done for you. let us do all of those moments for you and then give you the finished product where you can do you know the correct thing from the beginning and not um, play catch up and have to retrain like we have all right, guys, thank you so much for joining us. We will see you tomorrow. Again, if you're not in, if you haven't pressed the little link on here on the description to Press join it. the Confidence Coaching Week, if you haven't done that, make sure you do so so you can get access to the replays. You can get all the information. Make sure you know where to go for tomorrow. And if your questions are in the comments, do not be worried. We are going to get to you. Um, if for any reason I miss you at any point, shoot me an email and we'll get you all taken care of. We hope you all have a wonderful evening. We will see you tomorrow, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time for day number three. Good night, guys. Bye, guys. Do, do.